Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Three bottles of champagne to my left here uh, from H. Blinn. Um, now, Blinn, what can I tell you about Blinn? Uh, they are, it's a, it's a cooperative and um, um, they, I'm, actually, I'm just going to tell you that they specialise in Pinot Meunier and I pick up the first one and it says it's it's a Blanc de Blanc, so it's 100% Chardonnay. But um, yes, they um, and people make a big noise about Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier, uh, Pinot, uh, sorry, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Here, they like to make a big noise about um, about Pinot Meunier or Meunier, as it just is on this uh, uh, on this uh, wine number two. But before I do wine number two, I'm the type of guy who's going to do wine number one, just the way I am. Uh, so wine number one, uh, L'Esprit Nature, Extra Brut, uh, Blanc de Blanc, 100% Chardonnay, um, non-vintage, so I'm not sure what average age is here, but uh, let's give it a whirl and see where we get to. It smells young, fresh, um, there's a slightly, almost chalky edge to it. Uh, I don't know what the soil is like in this part of the world, but uh, uh, this part of Champagne, but it, it smells uh, sort of refri refined and sleek and slender. Um, it smells, just looking at the bubbles, it looks like it's on the younger side, but it's, it looks like it's going to be poised, precise and um, fine-boned. It's an interesting one, this, because there's a sleek edge, but there's a quite, a, quite a bit of richness there. So there is that, um, um, yeah, a steely backbone um, and um, more minerally than and stony rather than steely. Uh, and then you've got this quite voluptuous fruit wrapped around it, so there's a little bit of... Uh, um, of the baked apple, uh, baked Bramley apple, um, a little bit of um, uh, brioche in there, and there's this richness there, but uh, really nicely balanced. And um, I'm going to have another swirl. Mm. Yeah, the spittoon didn't get used for that particular one. I like, really like that. And yes, this uh, richness, but baked apple and a little bit of um, uh, slightly stewed rhubarb, which for me is a positive. For my wife, it would be a negative, but for me, thumbs up. Um, wine number two. So this is the Blanc de Noir, 100% Meunier, um, and again, not sure how uh, how old it is, but uh, let's give it a whirl. This smells deeper and toastier. Sometimes I get this characteristic in um, in Champagne, and I call it dry burnt sugar. Uh, there's a slight caramelisation of sugars, but it's not sweet. It just gives that that flavour without the sweetness. And uh, yeah, it smells like a. Uh, it's still got. It's still got those apples and almost uh, hedgerow characters. More more characteristics I associate with English sparkling than than with champagne. But uh, again, it smells like it's going to have um, this mixture of richness and sleekness. Yeah, broader, richer style of wine than the, uh, um, the than the first one. Probably higher dosage, giving giving the wine extra uh, amplitude. Probably prefer the first one. Uh, but I know lots of people who will prefer this because of that extra, uh, extra weight, extra richness. And the finish is quite sleek and it's still got that, that um, uh, yeah, that, that crispness about it and, and poise. But um, it's bassier and uh, it's not the first one shrill by any means, but uh, it, feels, it feels a little bit more aristocratic. Well, I've got some left in my glass, better try it, haven't I? Still pretty tasty. Um, final wine. Um, it's the vintage, um, 2008, so 10 years old now, and 50% Meunier, 50% Chardonnay. Let's give this a whirl. Now this is interesting, we've got a wine, first wine 100% Chardonnay, second wine 100% uh, Meunier, third wine 50-50 blend. And it seems to be almost like picking up uh, the best aspects of both of them. So it's got this um, finer, higher cheekboned style that was um, that, that was in the in the uh, uh, in the L'Esprit Nature, but then it's got some of that um, toasty richness that was in the um, in, in, in the Blanc de Noir. It smells it smells pretty good. Yeah, there's richness and um, it, it fit, it's it's got that sort of bassy note that I uh, noticed in the um, uh, in the Blanc de Noir, but it's got more life to it. Uh, so it's a it's a fine it, in terms of um, yes it, it it's not it's not a bass drum it's a bassoon so it's got a little bit of um, a joie de vivre and, and verve about it maybe bass saxophone um, am I making these instruments up a bit of chocolatey uh, cocoa character and uh, a slight nuttiness and there's this 
broadness about it, but with this sleek finish again. It seems to be a, a, a uh, characteristic across the range that uh, uh, they are able to, um, whatever, whatever the, the style of wine, there is this uh, crispness and sleekness of finish that's, that's really nice. So, probably my favourite, uh, then the um, then the Blanc de Blanc, de Blanc and uh, it's not that the Blanc de Noir is, is uh, inferior, uh, it's an inferior wine, it's just that the other two are much, no, not much better, but they're better. They're the ones that, um, uh, that I'll be setting into first. So we've, we've got eight people arriving in about uh, uh, ten minutes for a barbecue, and uh, I've got a feeling that um, these are going to go down pretty well. See you soon.